Hello reformers and welcome back to the last days and our Uruk adventures. Now when we left off we were attempting to eliminate a couple of the Lothlorian, well shall we say enemies in the area surrounding Moria and uh, well we, we actually did pretty well but I suffered some pretty heavy casualties so I had to go away and do a little bit about what I could do to you know try and restore our army and uh, I've actually traveled a bit north and there's two reasons why I wanted to do that one of them is to get Gundabad units I've actually done that I have about 20 of them and the other is to go and see these burial mounds because I've been seeing these burial mounds for basically uh, I think probably like I don't even know 90% of the game so far the uh, I think what, what is his name Lord Bard yes Lord Bard died very very early on in the series and I just never had the time or the inclination to go up here and this fellow has a burial mount right next to him so I, I decided to go up here and desecrate the site because why wouldn't we there we go okay so we've done that now there is also something else that I need to mention and that is the oath of vengeance yes the oath of vengeance actually did get completed when we were well te technically when I was off screen and uh, yeah you're gonna see the trait here Oathkeeper you have sworn grim oaths and lived to see them fulfilled subsequently you have acquired a reputation as a man of his word you receive a weekly influence bonus so I can assume that we're probably just gonna gain two influence I, I guess but what we also gained was a whole heap of rank points and that gave me rank 10 with Mordor so that's pretty cool I actually don't know if there's anything that I need to get at rank 10 but uh, I think I don't think there is actually hmm I don't think there is but I, I I could go back there at any time and see what's going on there anyway what I'm gonna do before I go over to Lord Bard's burial mound I'm actually gonna take a look at what's going on down in Gondorian territory you can see here not much not much I'm actually kind of surprised that nothing has been destroyed or taken or anything like that because you'd think considering there are so many Gondorian towns still alive and indeed Rohan has been completely murdered out of the game you'd think that Gondor would be definitely on its last legs right now so I'm actually just gonna take a look at the faction strength real quick Gondor is average still so they're doing pretty pretty fairly fine you know no, no problem at all there Rune is very weak as you can see Dale is about to be kind of weak and what about what about the dwarves how are the dwarves doing where are they did I miss them yes Erebor Erebor is okay it's not it's not doing great either but Isengard is quite strong Lothlorien is weakened as you can see right there so it seems like they're probably going to be eliminated pretty soon otherwise our influence with everyone is actually doing pretty nicely our influence points are doing well uh, you know as, as well as, as as it can be I guess and uh, yeah that's pretty good you can see here that the only places that we don't really have a huge amount are rune and canned and I don't really mind about those so much anyway we're gonna go over to Lord Bard's burial mound here and I'm gonna desecrate this as well because I'd like to get that trait I don't exactly know how many you need to desecrate to be able to get that trait but I, I feel like you need to maybe five maybe ten I don't know but we do have a couple of people from Mount Gundabad here and it would make a little bit of sense to try and get ten enemy prisoners yeah sure I can easily do that I actually did have ten enemy prisoners but I sold them hilariously enough just before this episode isn't that always the way that's always the way all right so what's this recruit your own scouting party I hate that task that is probably my least favorite task so I'm probably not gonna do that but I am gonna follow this guy and uh, I'm actually gonna see where he goes because I would like to see if he's going to maybe besiege something or maybe he's just gonna do battle with a couple of the vassals in the area all right so the action at Gundabad did not actually pan out as I had intended I did try to follow him for a little bit of time but it seems like he just wanted to patrol around the northern areas just picking on various dwarven patrols that were not vassals and I didn't really want to 
participate in that, actually, <laughs> amusingly enough. I'd rather go and attack this, for example, a Lothalorian caravan. Now, we do have 124 against 71. We are in the night, so we do have a little bit of an advantage as a result of that. And bear in mind that I've just received word that Mog the Seven-Fingered has attempted to besiege Minas Tirith, and uh, I think he actually did switch from Minas Tirith to Lossanach, so he is probably going to be doing that next, and uh, that's a bit disappointing to me, because I actually think it would have been really cool to do Minas Tirith, but uh, okay, well, you know, uh, you can't really do much about that, you just kind of have to roll with it. I do have a couple of these guys, North Clan Skirmishers, and uh, yeah, they, uh, they're pretty easy to level up, actually. They're pretty easy. Now, bear in mind, these elves are going to be so annoying, aren't they? Yes, we're charging up a hill into them. That's really not a very good idea. I know. I know it's not a good idea, but I'm going... I, I, I kind of have to. I kind of have to do it. So I'm basically just trying to keep myself a little bit alive here while I do a little bit of interrupting, shall we say? A little bit of interference for... Our forces. Oh, look at that. Level 34. Very nice indeed. Yes. That must have been a long time coming right there. I was. I, I could kind of feel like I was a little bit close to leveling up, so it was kind of nice to get that little bit of extra XP. And uh, hopefully, these guys are going to get swarmed relatively soon. I have to do so much of the work myself with Bear Uruk. It is kind of amazing the difference between playing as an elf and playing as an Uruk. You really have to get your hands dirty when you play as an Uruk, that's for sure. In comparison to playing <laughs> uh, the elf who literally does not need assistance with basically anything. You don't really need assist you, know, you don't really need to you know, do anything basically as an elf. You can just let your units do their own thing and they're most likely going to win if you have a good adv environmental advantage. Obviously that really does depend on victory with the elves most of the time because we've seen in the elf series if you've been watching that then you've seen that environment makes a huge difference you know battle advantage height advantage you know that kind of thing really does tend to indicate whether you're going to suffer horrendous losses or you're, whether you're going to be victorious with very minimal casualties but with the Uruk it's a completely different story you have to get in there you have to do 27 kills to even stand a chance without losing too many units. I mean, yeah, you know, it's, it's you know, okay, we've only lost four. But imagine if I didn't kill 27. Imagine if I didn't run interference into the archery line. It would have been an absolute slaughter. Absolutely. Anyway, I'm going to make my way down to Mog and we'll see if I can find any other patrols, or well, not patrols, but caravans along the way. Well, we've stumbled across something very interesting and uh, it's basically just a whole bunch of Isengard raiders, lords and uh, various other things from Isengard fighting a Gondor prisoner train and two lords from Gondor itself. So let's see what we're able to do here. We are around Minas Tirith as you can see right there. Look, there it is. Hello there. Yes, we'll hopefully be seeing the inside of those walls very soon. But uh, first, we're going to be taking something else by the looks of things. It seems like Mog is not actually participating in this particular battle. So I did tell him that I would be coming along and saying hi and lending my assistance. So uh, yeah, let's see how that goes actually because he's... I, I think he's still quite far away from us right now. And I don't know whether that's really going to... Whether we're going to get there in time, basically. But, uh, yeah, otherwise, thankfully these guys aren't elves. That's all I can say. It's so much easier to deal with humans than it is with elves. But, uh, I guess, you know, you already kind of know that. Although, that's actually a lot of damage. Look at that. That's actually a lot of damage that we've just taken there. And, uh, yeah, hmm. I'm a bit worried about this, to be honest. Even though they are just men, they are still kind of dangerous in uh, a couple of ways. Uh, I only have one cavalry on the uh, on the battlefield right now, which is absolutely awful. Oh well, never mind. Okay, so I'm actually going to try hitting people uh, with this sword again now that I'm damaged. Yeah, it doesn't seem like I am healing any further, so I assume that was a bug in the previous episode. I think that the Berserker trait 
had something to do with it. And I think the one of the developers actually did say in the comments that that was definitely something that they're looking into. And, uh, well, yeah. It's kind of fun. <laughs> it's kind of fun to uh, think that you have something like that. But uh, obviously, yeah. I, I might need to actually do a couple of battles without any armor on because getting the Berserker trait seems like a pretty fun and cool thing to do. So maybe it would be an idea. I'm actually going to tell my infantry to charge in now. There's only seven of them on the battlefield that I have under my command right now, so it kind of doesn't make sense to keep them back, even though they are kind of useful, I suppose. But yeah, anyway, let's just uh, continue to do a little bit of damage here. I, it's actually kind of sad that I don't have the Oath of Vengeance anymore, but I don't, I don't really need to do it, do I? I don't, you know, I don't really need to do it. Even though technically, if I did do it... I would, st I, w I would actually get a little bit more rank points, but it really depends on who I'm avenging, I, I guess. Because if I avenge a Mordor Lord or something, then I'll probably get rank points with Mordor, which I don't really want, all things considered. I would much prefer to get rank points with Isengard or Moria or, you know, one of the other factions, because they're probably going to be the ones that we really do need on our side when the time comes, basically, so, yeah, but for now, it seems like this battle is more than easily won, I think, I mean, we've only eliminated, huh, not even a hundred of them so far, but you can kind of see the writing on the wall, the writing on the wall spells quite clearly that Gondor will fall, well, at least in this battle. Well, it seems like I've killed 43 enemies in this battle total, and it seems like this warg is doing its be very best to eliminate this uh, skirmisher right there, and I think that is indeed it. There seems to be only two more enemies remaining, and uh, that will be the end of this battle. And then we will be free to go on to another siege. It would be actually kind of cool if we could see the inside of a Gondorian town for once, because we've only seen Rohan so far. And uh, I'm actually kind of interested to see what it looks like. Obviously, we've kind of seen Minas Tirith a little bit from the outside, of course, and we should kind of know what it looks like on the inside, I guess. Now, you can see here, unfortunately, I won't be able to take any of these because when these Goblin Clan North Clan skirmishers level up, they no longer allow you to increase your maximum company size. So that's the reason why that's happening. Anyway, I am able to take a huge amount of prisoners. Which is great, because that means I'll be able to hand in that quest. And uh, speaking of problems, I think we're actually running out of food right now. So I think what I'm going to do is I'll very quickly go in here and sort for a couple of prisoners. Alright, so here we are speaking to Mog. I just passed by another large battle with uh, the fellows that we were actually battling with beforehand, on their side that is, and they're just wanting to assist a patrol that has run into a couple of foragers and things like that, so nothing really big to worry about. I have a good company of hardened soldiers to help you out, and uh, apparently Mog is going to very much appreciate that, and hopefully he's not going to give us any annoying tasks that are really not going to do too much for us. But you can see here that there are 275, 285 total in the garrison here. I don't exactly know if there's anyone here that we need to worry about too much, but there are some unique units that I think will be quite devastating to us. We'll see. Now, what is this? Look at this. Okay, this is kind of crazy. It seems like Care Andros is currently under siege as well. I was actually given a quest to go and scout it, and that's exactly what I've done here. But it might make sense for us to actually help out Dunlendings a little bit, because, of course, we, well... We don't really need to help them out, I guess. We don't really need to help out Isengard either, technically. So we could just allow Gondor to fall without us actually contributing to it at all. We don't really need to do that. But I kind of felt like it would be nice because it's kind of fun. So why not? You know, let's, let's try it out and see what we can do here. I would like to go through the front door. I usually like to go through the front door and I very much appreciate the mod developers actually adding in destructible gates because, I mean, that's exactly how it's going to be, you know, it's going to, you're going to have gates, every, every single castle has a gate of some kind, and it would be nice to be able to get in that way. Now, hopefully our companions will actually do a pretty reasonable job here, it seems like Golm is doing a nice job, so far, and it seems like I might actually die immediately here, because I am pinned against the wall, that's great, 
Fantastic. Yes. I said that yeah, I said that these guys were not going to pose too much of a threat to us. No, that's a that's a wrong answer. That is in, indeed a wrong answer. They seem to have done a lot of damage to us. Can you please move? Thank you very much. Okay. So I'm actually just gonna get out my sword and shield instead then. Ow. Wow. Okay. <laughs> apparently, uh, yeah, apparently they're definitely not to be underestimated, but I would assume that the unique units that are in here, if they have any, I don't know whether they do, but I assume that they are probably going to be pretty deadly. Let's see if I can do something against these guys. I'm going to just try and play a little bit more tactically here. We need to make sure that we're not taking any additional damage. Let's see if I can do that. Whoa, there seems to be an invisible wall here or something. Yeah, look at that. I'm running against it. There seems to be an invisible wall. I don't exactly know whether I can't see the thing or whether it is actually just straight up wall, but uh, we'll see. Maybe I can get over here and just do a little bit of extra damage. I did not know that they could block with those, but apparently they can. Look at that damage. Yes. I really wish I had that bug right now. That would give me a lot of nice healing. <laughs> ah, yes. My bad luck. Oh. My bad luck for it to happen in a in a battle which I don't necessarily need it in, but in a siege, oh no no, of course I wouldn't be getting it then. Great. Well, my shield is holding up quite nicely against the ferocious arrows being drilled into it right now. But not that. Not 29 damage to the face. That's certainly not going to be withstood at all, but it seems like we did a pretty reasonable job at actually harassing the units in the square there, and if I zoom out you can see the utter, utter scale, the sheer enormity of the area, even though this is actually a smaller, you know, a little bit of a smaller castle, I can only imagine what it would be like to fight through Minas Sirith. I think it's going to be extremely exciting to find out, and obviously I think it's not that far away. I think in general, Isengard and indeed Dunlendings, they have it in their sights. They certainly do. And we're going to see how we do here. I, I think we're, we're pretty fine. There's only another 150 to go. I don't know whether I really want to continue to be in here myself. Because personally, rank points with Dunlendings is not really a thing that I really need or require in any way. So I'm going to just leave and uh, let them get on with it, I guess. And if I speed up time now a little bit, you can see that it has been taken. And Dunlendings now has Ker Andros under their control, which is actually kind of amazing. I thought they were going to raise it to the ground, but apparently they captured it. Now this is new to me, because obviously we have never once before captured anything. Everything has always been destroyed, so it's actually really nice to actually go inside and see the architecture, see what all the you know, various decorations look like and everything, and actually have a place to restore ourselves to. So I'm actually going to do that a little bit. Oh, Minas Tirith was actually under siege. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, apparently not anymore. And this... Ah, oh, Mog is fighting. Mog is fighting. Let's get there. Let's get there and try and help him out. I think we, we might... Uh, are we going to be in time? No. Oh. He has literally been destroyed. I, that makes me very, very concerned for what is actually in the garrison here, because I, I think you could see beforehand it had 275 as far as I'm aware, and now it only has 201. But Mog, he had 200 and something, and now he has 18. So I am kind of not really wanting to find out what's in there, but I my curiosity is getting the better of me. Let's see if I can actually help out just a little bit. I really don't have that much HP, so it's not going to work too well, but we'll try our very best. I don't exactly know which is the best way to go. Should we go up one of the ladders, or should we go through the doors? I think going through the door is probably the best for us. Bear in mind that most of the units as well that are on the battlefield now are going to be mine, so that's not good. That is not good at all, because that means that I'm going to have to uh, re uh, well replenish my army as best I can once this is over if if we are unable to and if we suffer maximum casualties which we probably will oh it seems like the enemy is not really that aggressive kind of surprising well what's up with what's up with this these guys don't seem that uh, that, that powerful and yet mog is losing that's kind of it's kind of weird. 
I don't exactly know what's going on with that. I mean, I have a decent sword now. I mean, most of the game, literally 90% of the game, I have been playing with one of the worst swords ever. It's basically the sword that you start with. So it's really nice that we have something new, but I'm just really surprised that Mog lost so many units against these units. I, I, I don't get it. These enemies don't have anything really to be too proud of. I mean, you know, they have axes and uh, they have very light armor. They don't have a lot of HP. You can see there, 55 damage was enough to kill one of them with a one-handed weapon, no less. And uh, yeah, I mean, this guy seems to be pretty shiny, so maybe he has uh, maybe he has something for us. Yeah, yeah, he seems... Oh, no, never mind. Okay, it seems like he was eliminated just as easily. Heavy Axemen. Interesting. Very interesting indeed. Okay, well, I guess I'm just going to continue to use my one-handed sword here because it's just so incredibly fast that I should be able to raid the Archer Nest easily enough. Although I am now being absolutely swarmed, which is, which is not good. Yeah, getting swarmed, I guess that's Mog's problem, isn't it? That's probably what happened to Mog himself. He just got swarmed. And uh, I guess we know what it feels like now, don't we? Anyway, I'm actually just going to retreat here because I do not want to go and lose all of my units. Unfortunately, my task is now cancelled because, of course, Mog was eliminated. Did we lich? How many units did I lose there? Didn't I have 109? Or do oh, it's because I retreated, isn't it? It's probably because I retreated and lost a whole bunch. Oh, well, never mind. Okay. It's easy enough to gain those guys back, but let's have a look at how many they have left. They only have 128. This should fall next time Mog decides to uh, try and take it. And it seems like Gothmog is attempting to eliminate Westos Gilead as well. So I suppose we're going to see a whole bunch of environmental changes in the landscape very, very soon. Because it seems like Gondor is starting to lose the battle. Anyway, I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.